Alright, so we back with another video. Today we got y'all boys with a very, very special, interesting video. Today we're going to be ranking every single NBA player. That's important, I guess, that gets minutes and stuff like that. I think there may be a couple that I may have missed. But for the most part, it's going to be a, a bunch of players from every single team. I got them in order. You guys want more videos like this? I did the defenders. Y'all actually didn't like the video, but y'all supported it enough that we can do a part two of the defenders and do the offensive players and rank them based off of strictly being offensive players. But today, we're going to be doing every single NBA player, just ranking them. I'm also going to do the point positions. Then we're going to do this probably again and incorporate projections for rookies. If you guys want more videos like this, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff out the way. No more talking. Let's hop into it. Alright, so hopping into it. We got the tiers. Tier one, best in the world. That's pretty much gonna be like S tier. So yeah. Tier two, top five caliber players. So pretty much you can argue that they're top five. Um, but they're not in the best in the world debates. So that's what it is. Um Top 10, pretty much players that you could argue is top 10 players, pretty much. Um, that's going to be like, I guess, the B tier. Then we have, after that, arguably top 25 players. And I think that's kind of like the tiers. Because um, there's some guys that's arguably top 25, that's not arguably top 10. There's some guys that's arguably top 10, that's not arguably top 5. And there's some guys, arguably the best player in the world, that is just not arguably top 5. Simple as that. Now, um, all-star caliber players, high-level role players, elite specialists, solid role player, um, and the rest. Now, the solid role player one, I'm actually thinking about getting rid of. Honestly, I'm honestly thinking about getting elite specialist and solid role player. I'm going to do that, actually. That's what we're going to do. Because usually when I do this, it kind of does get a little crowded. So we're going to put this one as 7. Now, if you're an elite role player, that does not mean you're bad. It's just you're not all-star. But any team, any championship team needs it. I think that the Celtics had two of them in a starting lineup, and they're arguably two of the best ones in the entire league. But let's hop into it. Marvin Bagley. Marvin Bagley is a the rest. Um, I don't think he's a high-level role player. He's damn near not. He's for sure not anything higher than that. He's going to be in the rest. And I think that's going to make it simpler doing it like this. Um, now, bro, right here, I used to say he was the best backup point guard for, like, the last two years before this year. This year, he goes to the Wizards. He's now starting. It don't look as good when he's not on the Grizzlies. Now, he was on arguably the worst team in the league. So, that is a thing, too. Um, but he had some good games. He had some bad games. Um, high level role player. Now, this is the thing. Years prior, I would definitely put him there. But after seeing what he looked like on this team, on a bad team, I don't know. Maybe he is only suited to be on good teams. But I don't know if he's high level role player. That's the issue. So we're gonna put him at the top of the rest, in my opinion, for now. Um, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, in my opinion, is he fits the criteria for a player that has borderline star moments. But when he's not playing good, it is very bad. So in my opinion, um, high level role player is kind of a guy that can be a jack of all trades, but it also can be a guy that can really be like a spark plug a six man, just a guy that can be a really good role player that actually gives a team something that they really do need. Like there's some teams that need a lot of scoring and having a guy like Jordan Poole that could just ignite an offense on any given night could be a help for some teams. But he's not a player that can be the best player or the best, you know what I'm saying, on a team. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'm gonna put pool. I'm gonna put pool here. I'm gonna put pool here. Bilal Koulibaly is a high level role player. Bilal Koulibaly, he has really good athleticism, really good defense. He showed a, a good couple flashes of his shooting. He was always supposed to be a good like slasher, be able to put the ball to the floor, get to the rim, score around the rim. But the flash that he showed shooting, the flash the flash that he showed playmaking wise is really what's got hope should have hopes up for 
the Wizards fans, and I'm putting him high level role player. Uh, Corey Kispert, high level role player, not as good as Bilal Kulabali in my opinion, but that's really due to more of the athleticism. But one of their better shooters, a very underrated defender, and he's not as bad as you would think at terms of putting the ball on the floor and being a playmaker. So I would say Corey Kispert is a high level role player. Um, it's kind of funny that, bro, it's really, it's some players on some of these bad teams that kind of like PJ Washington, kind of like Daniel Gafford, when a team, when they get put on a good team, put in a certain role, they're going to look a lot different. It's simple as that. Um, Denny Evdia, Denny Evdia is the definition of a high level role player, in my opinion. Um, I really do like Denny, great defender, great playmaker. The only weakness, true weakness he has is shooting consistency but he can really do it all on the court he has 6'10 he can put the ball on the floor he can play make he can do so much and yeah i would definitely have him a high level role player he's the epitome of a high level role player kyle kuzma kyle kuzma is another guy that's a high level role player in my opinion but i would have to put him here i would have to put him here i would have to put him there i think denny is better but he's can he Kyle Kuzma, at this point in time in his career, he's better than Corey Kisper. He's better than, what's his name, Bilal Kulabali. Now, if you put uh, Kyle Kuzma on a couple different teams, he would look a lot different. That's the thing. I don't know how good he would look on a different team. Like, I think he looks a little bit better on a bad team than he would do if he was on a good team. I think that's kind of what his game is more suited to. But I think he could help some some teams, for sure. Um, Quinn Grimes. Quinn Grimes is a guy I, I actually like, but I'm going to have to put here. I'm going to have to put him over here with the rest, honestly. Uh, James Wiseman, another guy that I like, but I'm going to have to put him here. He hasn't showed me enough to really warrant putting him any higher. Um, he's still a very raw player that shows flashes, but his flashes get overwhelmed by the negatives. When you watch him play, now he does put up some stats, but when you watch him play, the flashes can really get overwhelmed by the negatives. Simple as that. Um, Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah Stewart, honestly, I want to put high-level role player, but I don't know if I can do that. He is a really good, dirty work guy, though. He is a good, dirty work guy. But if I'm being honest, he's not actually better than James Wiseman. So I'm going to have to put him right here behind James Wiseman. Asar Thompson. Asar Thompson is a high-level role player. He's one of the best rebounding guards, one of the best defensive guards. Um... He's not as good of a playmaker as his uh, brother. He's a really good finisher around the rim. Well, he's a solid finisher around the rim, but he has the athleticism to have elite finishing around the rim, I would say. Um, the shooting is not there, though. That's the big issue with him and his brother. But I think he's a high-level role player. I'm going to put him above Bilal. I want to put him above Kuzma off the defense of rebounding, but Kuzma... Um, defense isn't horrible anymore, and his rebound is solid, and he's a much better scorer, much better shooter than, than him. Simple as that. J Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran is... I really do want to put him all-star, but I'm going to put him high level role player. I'm going to put him high level role player as well. I like Jalen Duran, but yeah, Jalen Duran... I have to put him high level role player because that's just kind of the level or caliber player he is. Um, I like him, but he's not ready for all star. But I put him right there behind Denny. Jalen Ivy. Jalen Ivy is a player that, in my opinion, I don't know if he's really being utilized right. I liked him a lot more as a Ricky than I did this year. Or he showed more flashes or consistency as Ricky than he did in his sophomore. I don't know. That's because the coach. Starting out the year, put him in the six-man role. But if I'm honest, he did look more like a six-man than he did the first year. So that's kind of factoring into it. Now, he did start to play more games and start more games and stuff like that. But what the coach was doing to start the year was kind of criminal. I will say that. But he, when he did play, he did feel like more of a six-man, to be fair to the coach. So I'll say that. But with that being said, we go in Jaden Ivey. I like Jaden Ivey more than Durant. I'm putting him in high-level role player for now. But, yeah. I honestly don't know if I fully believe this one. Actually, 
I don't know if I can put them above Bilal. If we basing it off last year, I don't know if I can base it. Do it. Because this is just basing it off this year. It's not projecting next year. We're going to do that projecting next year thing later in the future. But this is just off of last year alone. I'm going to put him there. K. Cunningham. K. Cunningham, in my opinion, was an all-star caliber player just on a very bad team. I feel like he's on a bad team. So people, go, when you say a, a very good player on a bad team, you really think of people like getting stats. But I want y'all to understand this. It is so hard to play on the Pistons as a guard when you have no force spacing, you have no shooting, um, your big man has in and out the lineup, and it's just kind of tough. You can't really perform consistent ISO without getting helped, sent easily, double teamed easily. It's really tough for Cade out there. But I do think Cade played like an all-star caliber player this year. So I'm putting him boy in all-star. I think if he had a little bit more floor spacing, or not even a little bit, a lot more floor spacing, I think he would be for sure. Like, like his play style needs the floor spacing for him to be able to get off what he needs to do because he's not like this crazy athletic guy. I don't think he's that crazy ISO guy. He's really a great pick and roll guy, but without the, the the right floor spacing, he really can't get that off perfectly. But he still was really, really good this year. He just needs to cut down on the turnovers, in my opinion. But I think that does go hand in hand with the floor space. Next is going to be Book Knight. I have no clue why I put him on here. Book Knight, you're going to the back. Seth Curry. Seth Curry is a really solid shooter. Besides that, he's not much else. We're going to put him here. Um, I'd probably rather Quentin Grimes than him because Quentin Grimes, he may not be as good of a shooter, but he's a much better defender. Mark Williams. Mark Williams is a very interesting one because when he plays, um, is, is he going to be good rebounder or is he going to be bad? He has He's very inconsistent in that realm because he can have a game where he can go for 20 rebounds. He has a game he can go for like six. He has a game where he can go for 20 points. He has a game where he can go for like six. So it's really inconsistent when he plays. And you got to put on top of the fact that he's very injury prone. That's just what it is. If I'm the Hornets, I'm not picking a player in the first round basing it off of the fact we have Mark Williams. I'm not going to lie. If there's a center there and I can take him, I'm taking him. That's just what it is. I think Mark Williams, he has upside. He has the potential. But in my opinion, I don't think you pick a player as the Hornets based off Mark Williams. Now, I was a, I was a guy that did think that you do pick the best player available and based off fit if you're the Hornets because I thought they were saying Scoot was such a great prospect and stuff like that. So I understood it. But this year, they did the right thing last year with Brandon Miller. I don't think that you mess this up and not get a big because they need a big, but they also do need a four. They also do need another wing or, I guess, guard, depending on which one they want to keep Brandon Miller at. Do they want to keep Brandon Miller at the two or do they want to slide him to the three because he is 6'9"? I don't know. But Mark Williams... <sighs> I'm gonna put at the. I'm gonna put on high level role player because he is a very, very. I think he's a better defender than Jalen Duran, but he's nowhere near the rebounder in my opinion. As Jalen Duran, that's just what it is. But yeah, Grant Williams. Grant Williams is the epitome of a high level role player, but it's just this year showed me to be honest that like I don't know, like he's a great. For a six, for him to be six six and as I guess built like he is, he's a really good power for for that any team could really use. But he kind of he kind of misses on certain things when it comes to like he's not the craziest rebounder, but he's a great box out player. He's actually a very versatile defender in my opinion. He's actually really consistent shooter. Com like contrary to belief, he's actually a pretty knockdown shooter. Um, but he's a role. He's the epitome of a role player. Like. It just is what it is. So that's what I'll say. But I will say the the big the gap between how the the gap between what PJ Washington gave the Mavs compared to what Grant Williams did, and they kind of do play the same role where they're gonna be a floor spacer on offense and on defense they're gonna be this versatile defender. <sighs> Man, I just don't know. Brandon Miller. Now Brandon Miller is a tough one. Brandon Miller is a actual tough one because he played this year with majority of the year without LaMelo. And he exceeded my expectations thoroughly. I liked him at Alabama. 
I thought that the um going into the draft, I was kind of scared about a couple things in terms of shot creation, though. He proved me wrong for year one. I really do like Brandon Miller. Um, I really don't know how to rank Brandon Miller because he's not he's not an all star player, but could he be all star caliber? That's the thing. I don't. He might be because he has good defense. He can score at all three levels. He showed playmaking chops. He showed shot creating chops. And he has the size that you really do want in your, I guess, two nowadays or three. So it's kind of tough. The upside is for sure there. He showed the flashes. It's was he consistent enough to be all-star. That's the thing. That's the thing. I think I think I might have to put him in um, All Star, to be real. I think I am gonna have to put him in All Star, to be real. I'm gonna put him in high K, but I'm gonna have to put him in All Star. Now Lamelo is a very tough one because he was injured again all year. Now when he played this year, though, when Lamelo played this year, he was amazing. Like in that December stretch, he was looking like one of the best point guards in the league. Not debatable. He had some flashes of better defense than usual. He was inconsistent defender. Don't get me wrong. But he had some he had some good defensive possessions. But more so, he was bad defender. But if he can lock in on the defense, be the playmaker that he is, score the way he does, I wouldn't I'm not mad at top 25 debatable. I'm not mad at that. Is he top 25 though? Because it's not about you being in the top 25. It's about you being debatably top 25. I'm trying to think of the 25 players. I think he actually is more so top 25 debatable than he is all-star. The thing is that I don't know if I'm really ready to put him there is the injuries. The injuries is the thing that kind of holds him back. And that's the part that's tough. That's the part that's tough. I'm going to put him top 25 debatable. But I'm not as sure about it as I am about Cade and Brandon Miller, to be honest. But yeah. Seti Osman. Seti Osman is the rest. I'm going to put Seti right here with Quinn Grimes. If we get a better coach, so y'all need a better medical staff? I don't know. Um, Kelvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson is a good spark plug, but he's not giving you much else. I'm going to put him right here with Mark Williams. Uh, I think he's... Uh, nah, I take Corey Kispert Grant over Keldon. I'm not going to lie. Keldon, he can be a spark plug. Solid. I mean, not really crazy playmaker. I'm going to just move on. I'm going to just put him as a high-level role player, to be honest. Jeremy Sohan. I like Jeremy Sohan a lot more than most. I think... What the Spurs have done with him playing point guard, it has kind of it has kind of elevated him into a much better player than what he probably could have became if he didn't play PG as much as he did. Um, he's now developed playmaking ability. He's a really good defender, really good rebounder, really, really solid. He's really developing into a much better offensive player because now he has the playmaking chops. He's getting better at shooting. Like, he's showing all these different flashes that he can do, and he already was a solid finisher. Like, he already was just going to be a floor spacer, but now he's a floor spacer that can playmake. When they get that real point guard, Jeremy, Jeremy Sohan is going to be very important to that team because he's going to be able to do all these different things on the court, and when he has the ball in his hands, it's not going to be one of those situations like in the in the uh, finals where the Mavericks, they was going through two people, and when they couldn't go through those two people, it was really only P.J. Washington that could really do any type of creation, and it wasn't that good still then. Jeremy Sohan having two years under his belt, and really that full second year was almost really just him trying to be like a point guard, trying to get better as a shooter. I think that that was a really good developmental year for Jeremy Sohan, in my opinion. I'm not going to lie. I do think that he was that was really important for his 
his career arc. I think that that's going to make him only better. It's only going to make him better. I think he's a high-level role player. I don't know if I can put him above a SAR because Sohan is still not the greatest shooter. And if I can't put him over a SAR, I'm not putting him over Bilal. But I'm going to put him right here. I think Jeremy Sohan is developing into a very special player. Devin Vassell. I like Devin Vassell a lot. Um, Devin Vassell is a tough one. I think Devin Vassell, Kyle Kuzma is very similar. I think Devin Vassell is better on good teams than he is on bad teams. Where I think Kyle Kuzma is better on bad teams than he is on good teams. But he can help both. So that's just what it is. So I'll put Devin Vassell here. Now, is he better than Jalen Duran? That's a tough one. I don't even know how to even really compare the two. But yeah, we're going to move on. Victor Wimbanyama. I'm going to be honest, man. Um, I'm trying to think about it. Is Wimby debatably top 10? I'm really trying to think of a, top, a way that you could really slide Wimby in that top 10. You would have to think that Wimby is the best defender in the league. That is not crazy. You would have to think that Wimby kind of was held back on his team offensively. That is not crazy. You would have to think that Wimby is a solid shooter. He was one of the best pull-up shooters, step-back shooters in the league. That is not crazy. Um, but you would really have to think that his playmaking is a lot better than he is, and that would be the crazy one. I think he's right. He's definitely top 15. Is he top 10 debatable, though? What I'll say is I wouldn't be mad at it. I just don't know if I can agree with it. I know yet next year he's going to be top 10. But this isn't projecting. This is just based off this year. I don't think there's a way you could really debate Wimby being top 10. I don't see it. Peyton Pritchard. Peyton Pritchard was really good in the playoffs. Peyton Pritchard was really good in the playoffs. That's all I can really say. We're putting Peyton Pritchard right there behind Jay Ivey. It's kind of crazy that they're that close, but Peyton Pritchard, he went A. Hey, TJ McConnell, I do think TJ McConnell played good in that series, but Peyton Pritchard played great too. I do think TJ McConnell did end up playing better because he ended up being the starter because Halliburton got hurt, but Peyton Pritchard played good too. Another guy on the Celtics that actually had a really good playoffs. He was there really showing people that, like, the Celtics don't really have no bad defenders. None. They have no bad defenders. And he's actually a really good defender. People going to look at him. He's white. He's still a really good defender. He's a really good shooter. He's a 3 and D guy. And he's a damn near elite shooter with really good defense. That's a really, for a team that really want to shoot threes like that, that is a very valuable player in my opinion. He may not be the greatest putting the ball on the floor, but what he's good at with shooting and defense, he's really good at. So I don't I can't put him over Gene Ivy, but I put him over Peyton Pritchard. Al Horford. Al Horford, man, held the trenches down when they needed him to do it without Porzingis. So with that being said, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put Al Horford. That's tough, actually. If Al Horford was a worse defender, it would be easy, but he's still a really solid defender. He really still can knock the shots down. He's not a good shooter anymore, but he still can, he's really good enough to provide the floor space that the Celtics need. I feel like on the Celtics, he just kind of elevated a little bit. He wouldn't work as easily on other teams as he does on the Celtics. Because the Celtics don't really need him to be as good of a he, he can be the worst floor spacer every single time, and they'll be fine. So, I'm going to have to put him up there with Mark Williams. I'm going to put him behind Mark Williams. Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, people going to be like, he's all-star caliber. I would disagree. But high of a role player. This is the peak. This is the peak version a high-level role player can be. Now, do, do I think that in the regular season, he wasn't as good defensively as he was in the playoffs? 100%. In the playoffs, in the playoffs, he was arguably the best perimeter defender in the entire playoffs. J Drew Holiday had a great playoffs. Now, I will say this. What the hell? I will say this. When it comes to Drew Holiday, 
Scoring, what happened after the first round, his scoring punch went up. His playmaking went up. His rebounding and playmaking went up during the first round against the Heat, but he wasn't scoring like that for real. But what he ended up doing in the Cavs series, the Pacers series, the Mavs series, the the, the, the Celtics needed 100%. And they probably don't really win that ring if they don't if he don't play as good on both ends as he did in that Mavs series. Well, no, nah, they probably still win. Not gonna lie, cause the the talent gap was just huge. But yeah, Derek White, I am a huge Derek White believer. But I will say this: in the regular season, def- defense he was much better. In the playoffs, first round he was fantastic. I will say this: when D Mitch got that switch on D White compared to Drew Holiday. You could see the difference. When D. White got that switch compared to Jalen Brown, you seen that difference. When D. White got that switch compared to um whoever, I guess, besides like the other two guys that came off the bench, I'm gonna be honest, when it was for Kyrie, uh Donovan Mitchell, he was getting cooked. I ain't gonna lie. That was the person you wanted to switch on if you was Kyrie or D. Mitch. Now we didn't get to see the full series with D. Mitch. Um Kyrie struggled. But I don't know what's up with the Mavs, but they don't really mismatch Hunt enough for the way that they play. Like they play a lot of ISO PNR, but they don't. They don't really mismatch Hunt enough. So that's just what it is. Um, D, D, Derek White, I like Derek White offensively way more than I like Drew Holiday. I honestly think the defense is closer, but in the playoffs, I cannot argue it. In the playoffs, is what's most important. I know that the regular season um, is longer. And Derek White was a better defender than Drew Holiday in the regular season. But Drew Holiday was arguably the best perimeter defender in the entire playoffs. Derek White was not that. And in my opinion, he wasn't even as good as a defender as he was in the regular season. Now, rim protecting as a guard, still really good. Um, Still really good. The on-ball defense is just not as good. He's getting blown by more and all this that type of stuff. He's not nowhere near as good of a screen navigator as Drew Holiday. That was never the case, though. So... Yeah, I do like Drew Holiday, but like, or not Drew Holiday, Derek White. I like him a lot. I honestly think still he's the most consistent player on that team because he's going to give you what he's going to give you. But after the playoffs, my claim is a little bit, you know what I'm saying, crazier. But that's what makes the Celtics so crazy because they don't really have to have, like, one player that's consistent every game. There's going to be one of those five players that's going to hoop every night. It is accepted. That there's gonna be, they're all five, all five of them are inconsistent. But it's the fact that one of them is gonna have a fantastic game on every single night. At least one of the five. Christoph Porzingis. Christoph Porzingis is a tough one. But I'm gonna have to put Porzingis in all star caliber. I'm gonna have to put him in all star caliber. He was very important to the sex, but was he? I don't know, man. I'm gonna be honest. Them people pretty much just won a ring without him. I'm not gonna lie. They pretty much just literally won a ring without him. He played like, Two games in the Heat series. They beat the Heat. They played, he played no games in the Cavs. He played no games in the Pacers. And then he played like two games in the Mavs series. Or three games. Yeah, he played three games. So, I don't know, bro. I don't know. This one is, a, that, that man Porzingis is tough. Now, he seemed like he was arguably their most consistent player as well when it came to the regular season. Now, I'm going to be honest. If we just talk about the playoffs, Porzingis was really consistent. I feel like the only bad game he really had in the playoffs was maybe game two versus the Mavs and game two versus the Heat. Every other game that he played fully and finished, I would say he was pretty consistent, but he didn't really play that many games. So that's kind of the thing that comes with Porzingis. We all know this, injury prone. He is an injury prone player. So yeah, but I'm gonna put him all-star caliber because what he gave the Celtics in terms of the in-between game was so important to that team. I cannot stress it enough. The in-between game is really important. The rim protection was really important. When he was out there, they were a far superior team than when he wasn't. And they still won a ring. They still won a ring. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is a very interesting one. I'm going to say Jalen Brown is top 25. I think people are going to say he's arguably top 25. Do I have him top 25? I don't know. I've always had JB as the better JB. I always used to say that. Is he better than Jimmy Butler? Last year, he probably was. This or this year he probably was. Before that, nah, I could I can't say that. But you can't you can't you can't get Jimmy that one because Jimmy didn't even play in the playoffs. JB was arguably the best player on the Celtics in the playoffs. Um, so I don't know. I would say 
that's a much more debatable thing now. But as a Heat fan, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm being as unbiased as I can. We gonna move on. Um, Jason Tatum. Um, Jason Tatum is a guy that's like. This is he's like the only guy on the Celtics that's like, in my opinion, stock didn't go up. It kind of just stayed the same this year. I think that Jason Tatum, in my opinion, was much better last season. I think in the playoffs he was far superior. In the regular season he was far superior. Like. I was talking to somebody. I don't think they – he didn't even know that Jason Tatum averaged 30 points per game in a season before. Jason Tatum was actually a consistent scorer last season, just last season. But the thing is, this year, the excuse was that he didn't have to. He didn't have to. And he showed it in the playoffs. He was literally inconsistent the entire first round, second round. Third round. I think second round he was actually pretty good. Third round was his best series because he was playing the Pacers like – I don't need to get into that. <laughs> it's the Pacers. And then in the finals, he was very, very inconsistent again scoring. But I think in the finals, he showed that he can be this versatile role player if he needs to be to help his team. Like, in the finals, he was guarding the centers. Literally was guarding the centers. Um, now, there was a game where the Mavericks was putting Tatum in the post, and Daniel Gafford scored every single time. I will not lie. But they only did it like three or four times. So if they're only doing that three or four times, hey, I'm going to be honest. You can live with it if he's going to be that good of a pick-and-roll defender. So, yeah, um, even when Jason Tatum wasn't really hitting his shots, he was giving you much better playmaking than you really expected. Rebounding was still well, but I'm not going to lie. The rebounding that Tatum does is not like it's not like the same as like a Jokic or Sabonis. It's like everybody's boxing out, and he's getting the board. Now, he was better rebounder, I would say, this year, but... I think he just went to grab more boards than anything. I don't think that was that. He became a better rebounder. Maybe you can say he became a better rebounder because he did go to grab more boards. But um, the thing I say with Tatum is I think some people want to put him in that best in the world debate. I don't know what's wrong with you, to be honest. But the top five debates is the one that's really the one that's with me. I don't. I see a lot more people putting him in top five because of the ring, but I think that's really the ring tax more than anything. Now, I ain't gonna lie. If you look at, if you just look at Tatum's resume and don't just forget the player, like just look at his stats, look at his resume, you definitely gonna be like, man, that may be the best player in the world. That may be a top five player. But when you watch him, there's no way you can tell me that he's better. Like he's he's better than the five guys that we're gonna talk about. So that's just what it is. Um, Jason Tatum, in my opinion, is more so a top 10 player, and it's like he's stamped. Now, he's more so around that 7-8 realm, I will say. Um, now, if we talk about this year, I said going into the year he was the best small forward. I don't know if that's true anymore. I ain't gonna lie, because he didn't really have to do much, in my opinion. So that was kind of weird to me. That's what he's a weird one to rank to me. But yeah, Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles is in the rest. I'm going to put Joe Ingles. I'm going to put him back here. Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz is in the rest. I'm putting him behind Tyrus Jones. Tyrus Jones. Uh, Mo Wagner. I like Mo Wagner. I'm putting him up there with... um. I ain't gonna, I'm taking Mo Wagner over. Mark, I ain't going to cap. Cole Anthony. He's going back there in the rest. I'm going to put him right there with Jordan Poole. Anthony Black. I love Anthony Black's game. I'm putting him right here with Ivy. Actually, he he gives you shooting, so I'm going to put him there. But, yeah, I'm putting Anthony Black here. Um, Wendell Carter. I like Wendell Carter a lot. But with that being said, I'm going to have to put Wendell Carter. Not going to lie. Lando Carter might not actually be better than, than bro. I'm going to put him here. Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac is arguably the best. One, uh, No, he's he's the top five defender. I don't know if he's arguably the best, but if you argued it, I'm not mad at it, to be real. But Jonathan Isaac, I'm going to have to put you. I'm putting you there. I'm putting you there because he's not as bad of a shooter as you would think. 
not as bad of a playmaker as you would think. He can put the ball on the floor. He can play pick and roll. He can play the five. He can play the four. He can play the three. He's very versatile in what he can do and what he can play. But what he's great at, he's arguably the best at. I wouldn't argue it, though. Uh, Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs is a perimeter defender that is a really good shooter. Um, has some underrated scoring chops, underrated offensive ability. I would put Suggs. I would put Suggs here, to be honest. If you want to say he's better than White, put him on the Celtics in Derek White role. He might be better. I ain't going to lie. He might be better. I'm not mad at that. Paolo. I know people going to be like, Paolo's a top 25 player. I don't think so. I think he's all-star caliber player. Um, he, When I watch him, especially in the playoffs, he gave me super Julius Randle vibes. Super Julius Randle vibes. I'm not going to lie. Now, come in college, I've seen a lot of mellow. In the league, Ricky year, seen a lot of mellow, in my opinion, especially scoring-wise. But I ain't going to lie. The more I look, the more I realize he's a lot more Julius Randle than he is Melo. I see people saying, LeBron, stop that shit right now. Stop it right now. Stop right now. No, he is not LeBron at all whatsoever. Franz Wagner. Franz is a guy I do like a lot. I need more consistency out of Franz. I do. I need more consistency out of Franz. I do. But I'm going to put Franz. I'm going to put Franz back here. I'm going to put Franz back here. Uh, Wesley Matthews. I don't even know why bro's on this list. Bro's still in the league. It's kind of crazy. Um, I'm going to put bro there. Bro didn't even play. AJ Griffin didn't even play this year. But I still, based off the year before, he was a really good 3 and D player. Don't really understand what was going on with them. I'm going to be honest. The Hawks is a team that's another team that's, like, bad. But they have so many good players that, like, like you have to be a literal casual to say that the Hawks have no talent. This team has a lot of talent. I don't really under, fully understand how they just can't put it together. They have a guy that a lot of people say is top 25. That Jonte Murray is a, another all-star caliber guy to a lot of people. Jalen Johnson had a breakout year this year. Bogdanovich was really good this year. DeAndre Hunter is a guy that is a little bit inconsistent, but he has the shot, the talent. It's Capella, Okungwu, Sadiq Bey. Um, I think A.J. Griffin is going to be kind of similar to Jalen Johnson last year, and he's going to have a breakout year this year. He's going to be really a really good guy that's going to get a lot more minutes if somebody gets traded or two people get traded. So I'm interested in that. But A.J. Griffin, I would put more so. He didn't really play this year. I'm going to put him at the top of the rest. Actually, I'm going to put him behind Tyus Jones because Tyus Jones is really good. Sadiq Bey. Sadiq Bey, I'm going to put I'm gonna put him. I'm going to put him here. Okongwu. I think Okongwu is right here. Capella. Capella. He goes back here with Mark Williams and Al Horford. DeAndre Hunter. I am a big DeAndre Hunter believer. If DeAndre Hunter goes to a different team, I think he could be similar to P.J. Washington where he has much more scoring reliability than you really expect, and the defense is going to really break out when he goes to a different team now. Is he inconsistent defender on the Hawks? Yes, I will say that. I will 100% say that. But I think that's really more of a bad team thing. You put him on a um a team that's going to put him in his role. Yeah, I think he's going to be a better player than this. Um, but he could be just one of those players that just don't care. So he could be more like a Wiggins where he has to go to a, a certain team to really fix him. Because if he don't go to that certain team, he don't really get fixed. But he he has a lot of potential still hidden in him. In my opinion. Um, but based off this year, I would put him, I'll put him like right here. Right there with Kelton Johnson. Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich is a really interesting player. I'm going to put Bogdanovich, I'm going to put him right here with DeAndre Hunter. Honestly. Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson is a great lob threat, great finisher around the rim, great well, not a great shooter, but a really solid shooter, floor spacer. I think people be looking at shooting percentages and be like, oh, my gosh, he's a good floor spacer. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. A lot of these role players don't get guarded. Like, like just because, like, a person shoots 40%, like Lou Dort, he's not getting guarded, bro. 
I'm sorry to tell y'all that, but like he's literally left wide open all game. Now that 40% is not the same as like a Corey Kisper 40%. Just it what it is. It's just not the same. People are not guarding them the same. Like, I seen a post about Caleb Martin shooting 37% for three, and they said he's an elite floor spacer for the Heat. Go watch the Heat games. They're literally leaving him wide open. The reason why he went off against the Celtics, the year that he went off against the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, go look at who the Celtics had on him. They had Rob Williams on him to be able to move off him and help in the paint. And the reason why Caleb Martin went off is because he made them pay. They was leaving him wide open. He made them pay, literally. So, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna just be honest with y'all, bro. Y'all gotta understand that shooting percentages do not tell everything about how the player is guarded and how good the player actually is. It just is what it is. But Jalen Johnson, I like Jalen Johnson. Um, he's a guy that really is well rounded. Caleb Martin brother be airballing every time. It's crazy. Uh, you want the Hornets to get Reed Shepard? That's kind of crazy. But uh, Jalen Johnson, I like Jalen Johnson a lot. I think he's a really, really good defender too. I'm going to put Jalen Johnson. Looking at this, I'm low-key kind of tweaking on Kuzma. I'm not going to lie. Looking at this, I'm really kind of tweaking on Kuzma. It's hard for me to put Jalen Johnson over Jonathan Isaac, and I'm not going to do it. It really is hard. I don't even know why I got Denny over Jonathan Isaac, but I think Denny is a little bit more capable offensively, so I guess that's why. But he's not. No, he's nowhere near as good as him defending. But Denny is a really good defender. Um, DeJounte Murray. I think DeJounte Murray is more so an all-star caliber player. Um, but I would put him behind... Cunning, Caleb Cunningham. I think Caleb Cunningham, what he played with, was a lot harder to play with than what DeJounte played with. Even if you want to talk about Trey Young there or not, that's just it what it is. Trey Young. I think a lot of people are going to say Trey Young's top 25, debatably. I don't know. I don't got him top 25 at all. But I got him like top 31, top 32. So I guess he could be debatable. So I'm going to put him. At the back of the top 25, I just think that the negatives of Trey Young are such big negatives that it's really always going to be tough to debate him to be that high. Really going to be tough. I think this is Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith is a solid big. I would put him right here. Really good rebounder, in my opinion. He's just waiting to go to a team where they're going to get him more minutes. Now, is he going to be as good? In that role where he's the starter, I don't know. But I think he has the potential to be a starter. Um, OB Toppin had a really good year this year. Defense is not there at all. But the scoring ability, the shooting ability, I don't know why the Knicks didn't gave him up, to be honest. I thought the shooting potential was definitely showing when he was on the Knicks, especially when he played the Heat. When he played the Heat, he don't miss. He kept that going when he was on uh, the Pacers, by the way. Um, but the the lob ability to play, bro, the Pacers are a perfect team for him. Like he he's a, he on a team that plays fast. He wants to play fast. He needs to play fast. So I like Obi Toppin, but he doesn't really play any defense. I'm gonna put him right here with Mo Wagner. Um, I forgot bro name, but he got a little bit better defender defensively. I mean, um, offense is really what he's good at, but it's really more so scoring. But he's not really much. Oh, Benedict Mathurin. He's not really much outside of that. I think he did get better as a defender, though. So I'll put him here. I'll put him here. TJ McConnell is a guy I really do love as a point guard. I really do love TJ McConnell. I really do. Like, TJ McConnell is so, so good, in my opinion. Um, he's going to be able to create open looks for people. He's going to really get better. Like, the fact that he doesn't shoot a lot of threes kind of helps him as a playmaker because he's getting downhill, getting to that mid-range, getting to that layup, getting to that floater, um, but really that mid-range. Um, and then he's creating out of that mid-range to get people good looks for the three ball, getting lobs. He's doing a lot of good scrappy stuff too, like getting rebounds. And he's also a very, very pesky defender. I'm going to put him... Above Jay Nivey. I think Jay Nivey is a better overall player, but as a high level role player, I would definitely rather TJ McConnell. I'm not gonna lie. If I if I already have if I already have a star, you know what I'm saying? And I just need a PG, I'm taking TJ McConnell over. I ain't gonna lie, I'm taking TJ McConnell over 
Kuzma too. If I already have a star on my team, I'm taking him. Simple as that. And that's kind of what a high level role player kind of really more for. These are guys that you're surrounding your star players with, pretty much. Um, Miles Turner. Miles Turner is a guy that I don't really like that much. But if I'm being honest, he had a pretty good year this year. Um, I don't think he's as good of a defender as other people, but shot blocking ability, he's really good. Rim protection, he's not good. If you don't understand the difference, this may not be the video for you. Um, offensively, though, I think he did take a jump offensively. I think playing fast actually did help him. I think he was one of the more consistent players in the playoffs offensively for the Pacers, in my opinion. I'm not going to lie. Like, when pa Pascal Siakam was up and down, but he was – he was Pascal probably was the most, off like, offensively consistent guy. I'm not going to lie. Because Halliburton had a, uh, had a lot more bad – had a lot of bad games. He had a lot of good games. But I think Pascal had, like, a couple bad games. But he was – every series can go series. I would say he was good offensively. Now, he had bad games in every series. But he was pretty good offensively in every single series. Um, but – the Miles Turner, the floor spacing he's going to provide, the the lob ability that he's going to provide, the pick and pop, pick and roll ability that he can provide, I think that's kind of invaluable because he's not just a floor spacer. He's a very athletic floor spacer. And that's like a thing that you don't really see in a lot of the floor spacing bigs. And that's kind of a rare thing that you see with him. And he's going to provide that shot blocking ability. So I would probably have to put – um. I probably have to put Miles Turner pretty high on here. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big Miles Turner guy. But I'll probably have to put, bro, like here. I'm not going to lie. I would definitely rather see McConnell, though. I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, I have to put him pretty high. Honestly, Miles Turner probably should be here, but I don't believe in his defense enough. I'll put him here. I'm going to put him here. That makes more sense to me. Um, Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam. Are we talking about the whole year? I don't think he's all-star. Or, yeah, I don't think he's top 25 caliber. I think he's really more so all-star. But I, I put him at the top of All Star. I think, no, I, I think Paolo was better. I think Kate was better. That's about it, though. Um, what Pascal gave them in the playoffs is really why I want to put him higher. But in the regular season, he wasn't really that good or consistent. So uh, that's what I would say. Now, Halley. Halley is a very tough one to rank because he had his bad games in the playoffs, he had his very good games in the playoffs, though. Like, very good games. All right. First round, he didn't really do much. Second round, he was a lot better. Third round, he was finna start getting it going, but he got hurt. So this is really more so based off the second round where he was playing a lot better. But I think most of it went downhill after the injury. Pre-injury, Halley was getting some top 10 debates for some people. Not for me. He was getting it for some people. I think he was really arguably definitely top 15, though. For sure, top 25. I don't know if I can put him over JB because he didn't finish the year. Now, if he finished the year like that, he might have for real been top 10. I'm not going to lie. Because he was averaging like 27 and 13 all the way into January. He was hooping. Bro was hooping. I'm not going to lie. That's like three months. October, November, December. And January, but he was literally only a part of October because season starts mid-October, and then it really only lasts like half of January. That's for real, three months. Bro was hooping, though. Like, go back to them in-season tournament time, bro was really hooping. Now, I do think his game is a little too one-dimensional scoring-wise, but when that's working, it's beautiful. I'm not going to lie, it's beautiful. So, yeah, and he, has, he plays on one of the most fun teams, one of the most fun play styles in the league in terms of how he gets the ball up the court, how they play so fast. I think Ali is going to be a guy that's going to people love for a while, but I'm going to have to put JB above, bro, because I think JB kind of finished the year out, and I think JB actually had a pretty underrated season on the other side of the ball. I think that's kind of the big difference with JB and these other guys in top 25. JB was a great defender this year. Like, he was arguably the second-best defender this year if you factor in the playoffs and how Drew was playing in the playoffs defensively. So, yeah, I really do think JB was pretty good this year. Um, and, yeah. Isaac Okoro. Put that boy in the rest. I'm going to put him, though. Put him here. He's a good defender, but he ain't doing much else. Put him back here. Put him on Wesley. Max Struess. Max Struess was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Max Struess was pretty good. He actually had a couple. He had a good game against Tatum defensively. That was kind of crazy. 
Max Struess was actually like playing defense this year for the Cavs. Kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. Now, it could be because he does have Jared Allen and Evan Mobley on his back line, two really good defenders. But I ain't going to lie. Max Struess was really like out of – I kind of felt like he was going to be the better of the two, but he fit really good. I thought that the, the Cavs needed a small forward. Um, I thought they was going to be in for a rude awakening. He was still a very inconsistent score. Don't get me wrong. But he gave them a lot more than I expected. I thought he gave them solid rebound. I thought he gave them solid defense. He was definitely a solid shooter. Yeah, he gave them a couple wins even with the clutch. He very, A. Hey, when the Struce lose, he going to be clutch. It's simple as that. I knew he was clutch, but he was, he was hooped. He hooped a couple games this year, man. I'm not going to lie. So I would have to probably put him as high-level role player. I'm going to be completely honest. I would probably have to put bro. I would probably have to put bro to right, back here though. Bro name is slipping my mind, but bro used to be on the Nets. Yeah, bro name is slipping my mind, but he got a more of a spark plus score. He got some solid defense, though. He's a lot better defender than most spark plug offensive scores. Um, good pick and roll player. Really good floater. Um, Karis Levert. I'm putting Karis Levert back here, though. Um, Darius Garland. Darius Garland, his stock went down a lot this year, in my opinion, for a lot of people. I think his stock went down a lot this year. Um... I would probably take everybody in All-Star over Darius Garland, if I'm being honest. I would take everybody. Darius Garland's stock went down. Um, I see some people saying that he should go to the Spurs. I don't like that fit for Wimby, man. Like, I know y'all want Wimby to have this this three-level score playmaking guard, but I don't want these defensive liability guys that Wimby's going to have to make up for the whole of his career. I don't want that. I don't want that for Wimby. I just don't. I want this. I want the Spurs to really make a well-rounded, balanced team around Wimby, where like it's not like I don't think y'all really understand why the Celtics were so good. The Celtics were small guard killers. If you were a small guard, you were gonna struggle against the Celtics. It's simple as that. Um, but yeah, Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley. I'm gonna put. Evan Mobley looked a lot better when he was the main only big. I would say that. But the Cavs didn't look better when he was the only big. That's what I would say. The Cavs did not look better when he was the only big. But he looked better as a player when he was the only big. So maybe that's the issue. Maybe they got to break that up. I don't know. But for now, I'm going to have to put Evan Mobley in high-level role player. And I'm going to have to put him right here. Evan Mobley should be a lot better than he is. He just isn't. So, yeah, let's keep it moving. Jared Allen. Jared Allen. I'm going to put Jared Allen back here. I think Jared Allen is a guy that a lot of people love. But what he gives you, he gives you. He's a really good finisher around the rim. He's, getting, he's gotten better this year as a finisher around the rim. Defensively around the rim, really good. Really good rebounder. He's going to be really good at those things. That's why he's going to be where he is. Now, the negatives are the negatives. But, yeah, he doesn't really play towards those negatives. He doesn't really even have to do anything with those negatives. So, they're not as big or impactful. But, yeah, high-level role player. Donovan Mitchell. I think after this year, I think Donovan Mitchell is a guy that you can say is top 10, debatably, in my opinion. Um, I think his defense was better than I, than I expected. Scoring-wise... Um, he showed pretty much the same scoring ability that he had last year, but playmaking wise is the jump that I would say. I think he always had the playmaking ability. I think he just utilized it a little bit more this year. I think that, um, he still delays on passes sometimes. He still does that, but I think Donovan Mitchell is still a very, very reliable player for the Cavs. Um, and arguably the best two guard in the league, I would say. But, yeah, that's kind of why he's debatably 10. And when I'm saying debatably top 10, he's literally, like, debatably for the 10 spot. Like, it's a couple guys that's just debatable for the 10 spot. It's simple as that. But the thing is, if he's debatable for the 10 spot, Wimby's debatable for the 10 spot. Because I got Wimby over at D-Mitch. So, yeah, I'm putting Wimby up there. 
I ain't gonna lie, I'm putting Wimby up there. Uh, Jay Crowder, Jay Crowder, you're going down here somewhere. I'm gonna put you right here. Patrick Beverly, you're going in the same spot, but I'm gonna put you over, bro. Pat Connaughton, I actually like Pat Connaughton. I'll put Pat Connaughton like here. Bobby Portis, Bobby Portis is a high level role player. I'm gonna put Bobby Portis right here. <laughs> Brooke Lopez. I think Brooke Lopez is still a solid shot blocking, three point shooting big, but he's like a guy that's not really suited to the today's NBA. You're gonna he's gonna get taken advantage of every time in the playoffs. Chris Middleton was really good in the playoffs. Still not a good defender, but scoring wise, what he showed was really good. He was a really good scorer. I've been a uh, Chris Middleton hater for the past couple what's the calls, but he's still a really good scorer. Um, I don't know where I would rank him though. He's like somewhere Kuzma to. He's in this realm. Devin Vassell is a much better defender. Chris Middleton probably a more consistent scorer than Devin Vassell, though. He's somewhere in this realm. I'm going to put Bro here because Asar is so much better defender, rebounder. Playmaker, damn near. I'm not gonna lie, like, he's he just much better at some of those things. But Chris Middleton's so much better scorer, you know, it's three level scorer too. So yeah, Damian Lillard. I don't really see a way you can really have Damian Lillard in the top ten, but I was or yeah, I would say he's top twenty five. Did he play top twenty five though? I would say no. I think Halley had a better year than him. We just basing it off this year. I think Ali had a better year than him, personally. That's just me, though. Giannis, best player in the world combos. Best player in the world combos. Best player in the world debates. Do I agree with it? Uh, I don't think he's the best player in the world. Am I mad at him being the best player in the world debates? Not really, but he's not like the first three guys I would name. I would be honest. So, there's that. Especially after the last two years, he's getting a little bit more injury prone. But there's another guy that's injury prone. But we can get into that later. Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond's going back here, man. He's one of the better rebounders, but besides that, he ain't much. Ayo DeSumo. I like Ayo. I actually like Ayo. I will put Ayo. Ayo right here. Patrick Williams, P Dub. I like P Dub. I will put P Dub. Pete up is a tough one. Look, he kind of tripping on him. Not gonna lie. Um, Pete up. I probably play Pete up like right there. Alex Caruso, new Thunder player. I really did like that trade for the Thunder. I like the trade for both teams, to be honest. I think people kind of sleeping on how good Giddy would be with the ball in his hands more, to be honest. But Alex Caruso. There's another guy that shot 40% that people going to be like, floor spacer. But I ain't going to lie. If he can be another Lou Dort where they're going to leave him open and he's going to knock it down consistently, that's just going to make that team much tougher to play. Because on the other end, he's going to be arguably their best defender pruner. I'm really thinking about it. They got J-Dub. They got Dort. They got Case and Wallace off the bench, who was arguably their best pruner defender already. I ain't gonna lie, Caruso may be their best perimeter defender. Is he their best defender on their team? Hell no, they got they got Chet. But at the same time, Alex Caruso is a phenomenal on-ball defender. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, I would put Alex Caruso right here, though. I don't think he's given the offensive... I don't think he's given the offensive upside as any of the other five high-level role players. Well, really... Him and Evan Mobley off his upside is not crazy. I think Evan Mobley is a better offensive player, but he has not been that crazy offensively. Defensively, though, I would have him better than Denny. I would have him better than Derek White. I would have him better than... Him and Jalen Suggs is a debate. I would have him better than Jalen Suggs and Drew, but Drew was so good in the playoffs, I don't know if I can say that either. So I don't know. Jalen Suggs was really good in the regular season defensively. Drew was really good in the playoffs defensively. That's debatable. Those two are debatable, but that's what we leave in that. Vucevic. 
Vucevic is a guy that we're going to put at the back with these other bigs. I'm putting Vucevic actually above Mo Wagner. I don't know what's going on with Mo Wagner, to be honest. I'm going to keep it a bean. I don't know what's going on with Mo Wagner. I was hooping with Mo Wagner for a little bit there. To be honest, I was really hooping with Mo Wagner for a little bit there. Looking at it. <laughs> I don't know what I was on. Zach Levine. Zach Levine. When he's playing, he's all-star caliber. But when is he playing? I'm going to put him... I'm going to put him at the back. He's he's behind Darius Garland, but he's an all-star caliber player. DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, probably another guy that's an all-star caliber player. If I'm being honest. I don't look at him as an all-star, but yeah, he's debatably all-star for some people. So I'm going to put him in there, honestly. Um, Kobe White. Kobe White is a really good player. Kobe White is a really good player. I'm going to put Kobe White here, though. High-level role player, in my opinion. He does have the upside, but he showed the flashes this year as a scorer this year. Um, I think he's a lot better defender than people give him credit for, too. Um, Yaku Porto. I'm going to put bro back down here. I'm going to put him down here, man. I'm going to put bro down here for sure. Kelly Olynyk. Kelly Olynyk is actually a really solid role player for big. I would put Kelly Olynyk here. Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Tell the two season for Bruce Brown. He was on teams that really didn't fit. He didn't really fit on compared to the year before where he fit perfectly. So he got his bread though. He got his ring and he got his bread. He managed to do both. So hey, shout out to Bruce Brown. But yeah, I would put Bruce Brown based off this year. I'm going to put Bruce Brown, like, here. Gary Trent Jr. I got Gary Trent Jr., like, here. R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett had a solid year this year. Wasn't crazy, though. I would put R.J. Barrett. Hell no. You're not better than none of these. I'll put R.J. Barrett here, though. Isaiah Quickly. Emmanuel Quickly. I said Isaiah Quickly. Emmanuel Quickly. I am really high on Emmanuel Quickly. I think he could be in, this could be like Shades Part 2, Harden Part 2, where he got traded to a team that's really on the come up, and he could take off. I don't, the thing is, I think RJ Barrett may be one of the guys that messed it up. He got a couple guys on his team that's kind of looking to score more so than when Shea went to those teams, more so than when Harden went to those teams. Like, Scotty Barnes, in my opinion, is the guy that they look at as the best player. RJ Barrett is a guy that they're going to get a lot, that's going to get a lot of shots. I'm interested to see where Emmanuel Quickly will fit into that fold. I do think Emmanuel Quickly is a great defender. I think Emmanuel Quickly is a great scorer or has the potential to be a great scorer. Um, the playmaking is really what could get a lot better. But I like Emmanuel Quickly a lot, to be real. I will put Emmanuel Quickly right, right here, honestly. I like Emmanuel Quickly a lot. I'm not going to lie. If I'm being honest. Um, Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes. I will put him here. Honestly, I think Scotty Barnes is really good this year, defensively, offensively, really good, really good, really good. Uh, Matisse Thybul, Matisse, put you back here. Scoot Henderson was pretty bad, man. I'm gonna be honest. This was this was the one they was hyping him up crazy. Now he looked, he really popped off the screen athletically, but coming into the draft, the issues that he has in the league are not. Surprising, it's surprising how much they affect him in the league, in my opinion. So that's what I'll say with Scoop. Um, and the one thing that I'll say for sure that's the big issue. He's not as athletic as they were saying. He's not. He's not Russell Westbrook athletic. He's not D Rose athletic. He's not even as big as those guys. They were saying he was this crazy all-time level athlete that actually has the strength to put all this together day one. He did not have those things, in my opinion. And he looked a lot smaller than they was even trying to say. So Scoot is a very interesting one. I'm going to have to put Scoot still, though. Still, though, I'm going to have to put bro over Markel, Poole, all those guys. Actually, 
Claypool better than bro. But everybody else, he's better. Cole Anthony, yeah, he's better. Rod Williams, injury prone, injury prone, injury prone. But I'm putting Rod Williams at least right here. Malcolm Brogdon, injury prone, injury prone, injury prone. But I'm going to still have to put bro right here. Um, Bro, I don't know what's going on with the Trailblazers, but they building an injury prone roster. This dude right here, Shaden Sharp, bro got so much potential. Will he meet it? I have no idea. But so much, so much potential. I'm going to put Shaden Sharp here. He probably should be lower. He probably should be higher. I don't know, though. DeAndre Hunter, or not DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Ayton. Not the biggest DeAndre Ayton guy. If you've ever seen me do a tier list with DeAndre Ayton on it. But with that being said, DeAndre Ayton, I will put him. I'll put him like here. Right there with Kuzma. That's perfect for him. I, and for any Simons. Simons, in my opinion, was an all-star caliber player. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I think he was all-star caliber. I think a lot of people would disagree with that. But I think Simons is really tough on that team. Really tough. Simple as that. Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant is starting to get there up there in age. But Jeremy Grant is really good still, in my opinion. I got him a high-level role player right in front of Jalen Johnson and Jonathan Isaac. Precious Achua. Precious actually had some pretty solid minutes in the playoffs, to be honest, for how bad he is sometimes. But he still was getting them fouls, but he was pretty solid. He was pretty solid when he gave him to play, I will say that. But I'm going to put bro... Put him here. Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich was not that good this year. He was just not that good this year. I will put Bogdanovich. Yeah, he wasn't that good this year. I'm going to have to put, bro, kind of down here, honestly. I'm going to put him here. Isaiah Hartenstein. Hartenstein is a guy that a lot of teams going to want to pick up in these uh, in this free agency. I ain't going to lie. I think Isaiah Hartenstein was good, but I think that may be more of a fit thing than anything. I think Hartenstein more so like right here, honestly. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson kind of more so in that same boat. But I will put Mitchell Robinson here. I think Mitchell Robinson, what he gives you offensive rebounding wise, something that's really hard to replicate. That's just what it is. I think his game is more so suited for the playoffs than it is for some of these bigs, though, because of the offensive rebound part. Actually, no, I can't even put him over uh, Rob because he was injury prone too this year. Josh Hart. Josh Hart is a super high level role player the epitome of the word he's the epitome of the word um josh hart is a tough one josh hart is a very tough one i'm gonna put josh hart here i want to put him up there with chris muddleton but i can't do it Julius Randle, all-star caliber player for sure. I think this was arguably his best season. I will put him over DeMar. I will put him over Zach. Garland is a tough one because I think Garland would be a lot better on a different team. I think him and the D, the, him and D Mitch duo is not it. Don't really work because D Mitch needs the ball. He needs the ball. I've said this multiple times. Um, I'm going to put Julius Randle over both. Is Julius Randle over Franz? That's where I'm going to stop. OG Ananobi. OG Ananobi is a high-level role player. Bro, his impact. I don't even think he's, like, the best defender. I don't think he's the best offensive player. But his impact on the Knicks alone, is it was crazy. His impact when he was healthy was crazy crazy i ain't gonna lie um i'm gonna have to say he's somewhere in this him or jalen johnson see i think jalen johnson may be a better player than bro but jalen johnson don't got that impact that's a tough one i think you put og and Nobi on any team for real man i'm gonna put og and Nobi right there behind jonathan isaac I think Johnson Isaac is the only guy he can't really touch. But, hey, OJ Nobi had a crazy year this year. 
Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is RB top 10. I think more people would have him over Wimby than me. I don't have him over Wimby, though. I'm not going to lie. The defense. Defense does matter, in my opinion. But that's just me. So, yeah. I'm going to just say that. Personally. Um, Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry. He was a good role player. I'll put Kyle Lowry back here. He was, he was pretty good this year, even when he was on the Heat. The reason why he got traded, because that, that January span where he shot like 8% for three or something like that, that was awful. That was awful. It was like two weeks. Like it, he, Bro, he was bad. But he was injured. He had to play through the injury. But he got healthy. He started playing a lot better for the 76ers. That's just who it is. My buddy Hill, one of the best shooters in the league. But if he's not open, he's not shooting that ball. I learned that in the playoffs the hard way. We putting that boy in the rest. I cannot put him any higher. I'm putting him behind A.J. Griffin. Um, Kelly Oubre was really solid, though, this year. I liked Kelly Oubre. I would put Kelly Oubre. I'll put Kelly Oubre, like, right here. Nah. i put Kelly Oubre, like, right here. Yeah. Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris is a guy that, like, if he's your third option, that's not ideal, in my opinion. His game is suited for it, but his consistency is not suited for third option, in my opinion. I think it's the consistency thing with him. So, but the thing is with Tobias, when he's the second option, he plays so much better on both ends. It's actually crazy. So, I don't know. Tobias Harris is probably one of the weirdest players I've ever seen in my life. Like, the lower option he becomes, the worse he gets. But he, I will say this year he was better than he was last year. That's because last year he was a fourth option compared to the third option. But he had more games in the second option than he did third option just last year. So, I don't know. It's kind of tough. Uh, Tobias Harris, though. I'm putting that boy right there with Keldon Johnson. I'm putting him above Keldon Johnson, though. D'Anthony Melton, I like D'Anthony Melton a lot. He just didn't play a lot this year. But I would put him. I'll put him right here. Actually, D'Anthony Melton. I'll put him right here. Tyrese Maxey. I think Maxey was pretty good this year, man. I got, I ain't gonna lie, Maxey. I ain't gonna lie, I think. He can be in them top 25 debates now, man. Um, he does play with Embiid, so I, you can tax him for that. But Maxi had a pretty phenomenal year this year. I think the real edge I would give Maxi over Lamelo and Trey would be health. The health is the issue with him, with them. Um, but playmaking, they're better. Simple. Lamelo probably is a better defender. But they're all three bad defenders, in my opinion. Um, the scoring, I think, honestly, as a score, Maxi's more consistent than the other two. Now, that could be because they're guarded as the number one option. Maxi plays with Joel Embiid. So that's kind of what it is. But Maxi had a pretty phenomenal year this year. I think he took a pretty big jump. Um, simple as that. Joel Embiid is in the best in the world tier, and I got him over Giannis. I think Giannis' flaws is what kind of hurt him for me. If we have a best player in the world combos, I think that's what kind of hurts him for me, in my opinion. But Embiid's really own, only flaw is injuries. That's literally like his only flaw, injuries, bro. I don't really know what to tell y'all. Embiid's in, like, injuries, if he's healthy... All these years, Embiid is looked at as probably the best player in the world. Simple as that, but just say what it is. John Collins. Um, man, why do I have John Collins even on here, man? I'm starting to get – how many more I got? Okay, I only got – man, that's still a lot. Uh, John Collins, Lord have mercy. Uh, let's put bro. Let's get some of this going. Let's get some of this going. Walker Kessler, I like Walker Kessler, but 
I'm gonna put bro here. Tht, I like Tht. He's solid. He gave them some solid minutes. I put him above Max Drews. Um, Jordan Clarkson, Spark Plug, Spark Plug. Put him right there with Bodanovich. I like him more than Bodanovich. Um, Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton had a pretty good year this year. I'm not gonna lie. I'll put Colin Sexton though. I'm not gonna lie. I can't put him no higher than here. Uh, Lori Markinen. Lori Markin is an All Star caliber player. He's not top 25, in my opinion. I would put him at the top of All-Star, though. I would put him literally at the top of All-Star. I don't think there's going to be anybody that's better than him that's an All-Star caliber player. I'm not going to lie. I'll put him at the top of All-Star. Um, Luke Kennard, really good shooter. Not much else. I'm putting that boy down here. Vince Williams, I like him. Very solid player. I'm putting him for now, though. Give me Vince Williams here. G.D. Jackson. G.D. Jackson. Kind of similar. I'm going to put him back here, though. Honestly. Mark is smart. Very overrated defender for the past couple years, but he's still a good defender. Um, still got to give him his credit where credit is due. Did he deserve a defensive player here? Hell no. I'm going to put him right there with Bruce Brown and Ayo. Uh, no, 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 no. He better than Benedict McTherin. To be honest, he better than Benedict Matherin, too. Or he better than Io. But that's why I'm putting Marcus Smart. Devin Bain. Devin Bain is a tough one. I ain't gonna lie. Devin Bain is actually a pretty tough one. Devin Bain is actually a kind of tough one. If you want to say he's all-star caliber, I'm not mad at it. I'm putting him high-level role player, though. I don't think he's... I don't think he's... Ah, man, he might for real be all-star caliber, though. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I'm going to put him all-star caliber. I'll take him over D, DeMar Rosen. Injury, so Levine. Really, Devin Bain got injury problems too, though. That nigga Devin Bain for the fuck my list up. Um... Jaren Jackson Jr. Jaren Jackson Jr. is all-star caliber for sure. Give me him over all these guys for sure. Yeah. John ja Morant. He just didn't play. If he played more, when he played, he was phenomenal. He kind of reminded me he was a lot better than I, I, I realized, but he just didn't play. That's kind of the issue. So I put it, I put it like this. Top 25 is really just all the like non-top five PGs. It's kinda, or yeah, non-top five PGs. Yeah. Um Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, you're going to the back of high level role player. Dorian Finney Smith. DFS. He not light looking a little crazy when you're not playing with Luca. I'm gonna be honest, but I think a lot of teams are still gonna try to trade for you. I don't know if it's gonna work out the way they're expecting, but I will say DFS is here. I'm not lie, Rod Williams is a little low on this, but I don't care. Lonnie Walker, Lonnie is cool. I'm gonna put Lonnie where bro at. We'll put Lonnie here. I'm lucky tripping on Marcus Smart right now. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Marcus Smart got to be up here with Peyton Pritchard, man. That's so disrespectful. Put both of these niggas up here. That's so disrespectful. I can't lie. But was Peyton Pritchard not better than both of them? I don't know. That's tough. Faye Bridger had a pretty good playoffs. That's pretty tough. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr., I like Dennis Smith. We putting him right here with Io. I like Dennis Smith though. Cam Thomas. If he's not scoring, he's not giving you shit. I he actually not give you nothing. I'm putting bro down here. 
not gonna lie. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Nah, I can't even do that. I'm gonna put him up here with Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, cause Jordan Clarkson not scoring. He ain't giving you. I mean, actually, just bring Jordan Clarkson that down here too, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. Just bring that nigga down here too. It's a couple niggas that score. They don't really give you much in there though. Looking at it, not gonna lie, Keldon. I ain't gonna lie. I may gotta bring you down, but you 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 give him a little bit more. Dennis Smith Jr. or not? What the? F Dennis Schroeder. I like Dennis Schroeder, but like, I feel like he just was on the wrong teams. I'm gonna put Dennis Schroeder behind Wagner, though. He's still a high level role player to me. I think most teams that's trying to win would want him on their team. Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson is a weird one. Not gonna lie. I'm gonna put Cam Johnson right there with DeAndre Hunter. Mikael Bridges. Mikael Bridges at the top of high level role player. I think that's a guy that literally gotta be a role player. If he's not a role player, man. Trolling him. Nick Claxton. Another guy. Top of a high level role player. But he's going to be here. Evan Mobley is better than Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton, better defender. Evan Mobley, better offensive player. Simple. Put him here. Uh, Kyle Anderson. How many more? Oh my gosh, we got a lot more still. Uh, Kyle Anderson. This is tough. He's definitely high level role player, but where would you put him? Hey, I'm done ranking some of these guys. Uh, Mike Conley, high level role player. Nas Reed, high level role player. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Niggas ain't gonna like this one. High level role player. Not gonna lie. Uh, Jamie Daniels, high level role player. Towns. Ooh, shit. Towns may be at top of All-Star. Towns actually might be top of All-Star. I'm not going to lie. I would take Laurie over uh, Towns. I would take Scotty Barnes over Towns. I would take Paolo over Towns. I'm putting Towns there, though. I take all three of them over Towns, but, hey, that's debatable. All three of them boys are just debatable. I'm not going to lie. If you try to tell me Towns better than them three, I would say those three are better, but I ain't mad at it, to be honest. And... Ant got to be in the top 10 debates after this year. I'm not going to lie. I think people got to Ant over Wimby. I think what Ant did in the playoffs, he can put that together for a full season. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But, yeah, uh, Ant, really, really good defender. Not great. Not elite, but really, really, really good. Um, offensively, if he can dedicate his game to be a more downhill approach, he could easily stamp to be top 10 and be over Tatum. Because Tatum, I think he too late in his career to really try to change his game to that. I think Tatum's game is kind of just going to be what it is. I know we probably don't like his play style, but that's it fit, it's, it's got a ring now. It's been stamped that it works. So I, don't, I think what Tatum's game is going to be is what it is. And I think there is ways he can prove his play style, improve his shot IQ, improve his IQ in general. So I'm interested in Ant. I'm interested. Um Gordon Hayward, high level role player. Kason Wallace, high level role player. High level role player. High level role player. Giddy. Giddy is a tough one. I'm gonna put Giddy in the rest, but I think that's just more so the role he was in. But he has to be in the rest because he was really unplayable. He didn't have a ball in his hands enough. But yeah, simple. Um Oh, forgot about Chet. I actually did forget about Chet. I ain't gonna lie. Chet, I got you right here. I got you right there. J-Dub. That's a tough one. Man, if the, hey, if the Thunder managed to get Lori Markinen. GG's man, GG's, GG's. That's all I'm gonna say.
GG's. Get them boys that ring. Get them boys that ring. Shay, Chat, J Dub, Lori, and they got Caruso. GG's. Get them boys that ring. Give them that ring, man. Facts. Uh, but Lori. Or not Lori, J-Dub. J-Dub is a tough one because I actually do think he's better than Chet. But Chet, what he gives you defensively, you can't really replicate it from J-Dub. I'm going to put J-Dub. I'm going to have to put J-Dub back here, honestly. Shay. Shay is a tough one because I'm going to be honest. I got, I ain't going to lie. I got Che over Giannis. I got Shay over Giannis. So this is what, I don't know if Shay's in that convo for best in the world. Honestly, I don't think he is. I think he's had the last two years where he played phenomenal, but the year before he wasn't in the best player in the world combos or debates. I didn't even have him in that. Um, I think he broke into the top 10, but I think he's for sure a top five player. I don't really see how you could really debate Shea not being a top five player. If you don't have Shea in the top five since like February, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, the only way you could have had him before the playoffs that he wasn't in the top five is because he had never done it in the playoffs. Bro, he did it in the playoffs. He was arguably the best offensive player in the playoffs this year. So, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, but is he in the best player in the world debates? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I think the reason why Giannis is for most more so than Shea is because he did win that ring. Simple as that. But I got Shea over Giannis. Personally, I ain't gonna lie. When you really think about it, Shay might for real be the best player in the world. The base more I'm thinking about it because all these boys got flaws, man. Shay flaws ain't really flaws though. Like and B flaws, not really flaws either. It's really injuries, but like outside of that, like I don't know if he's as well this year. Um, defense. For MB wasn't that crazy. Like defending in space wasn't that crazy. Rim protection was for sure there. Shot blocking was for sure there. But defending in space wasn't there. Especially after the injury, he was awful defending in space. Defense as a general wasn't that great. But man, Shea actually, you could really argue he's top two. Because his flaws, he's he plays games. You know what I'm saying? His flaw really offensively is three-point shooting. He is not... Bro, Shea... Bro, this is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Shea is a great three-point shooter. He just doesn't shoot them. He literally just doesn't shoot them. This is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. Like, there's players that shoot 40% for three, but they cannot shoot the shots that Shea shoots off the dribble. Shea is doing step-back, off-balance threes with defenders draped all over him. That's not a real... That's, that's not, you cannot compare the two. You can't, you literally cannot. Go watch how they were defending that man Shea in that Maverick series. Go watch how they were defending Shea in that Pelican series. Shea was out there getting a bucket. Shea probably got the best play, guard, like wing guard play style offensively in the league. There's nobody that can really, com like, that can really, like, if, I'm going to be honest. If Tatum tries to copy that play style and tries to copy that play style, they would probably be far better players. Far better players. But I don't know if they would be able to do it. i gonna be honest. I don't think they got the IQ. I don't think they really would able to be able to just keep doing that. I'm going to be honest. Um, but Shea, that's a special player. I think I may need one more year to put him in the um, best player in the world. Base. I really, I'm thinking about it because after, I'm going to be honest. In that Mavs series, he outplayed Luka. You can say Luka was injured, whatever. He outplayed Luka in that series. I'm going to be honest. He outplayed him. Simple. I think in the playoffs, you could really argue, and we talking about the whole playoffs, nobody really outplayed Shea for real in the whole playoffs. Like, you could really argue he was the best player in the playoffs. Him or Jokic, in my opinion. Especially on the consistency factor, I think Jokic was more inconsistent than Shea. Not going to lie. That's a tough one. Shea, I ain't gonna lie, Shea for real could be right there. I don't think he's there, but I, I gotta put him top five. I think he's for sure top five, though. I don't think it's really a debatable thing, but yeah.
Jose Alvarado, too small. Too small for today's league. Unfortunate for bro. I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him up there though on the rest though. He's just too small. If he was just two inches taller, he'd be straight. Najee Marshall. I'm gonna put him in the rest. I don't even know where to put him, so I'm gonna put him. I'm not gonna put you at the back though, bro. Out of respect. I'm gonna put you. I'm gonna put you up here. I like him. I, he got fired. I, I like I like what he did with Jimmy in that game where he was going back and forth. He even got Jimmy kicked out the game that helped their team, in my opinion, I would say. I think they won that game or they lost. I don't remember. But then Dan, Dan, Dyson Daniels. Dyson Daniels, I'm really high on his defense. I need more minutes for Dyson Daniels, though. I do. I literally do. Um, one of the better perimeter defenders in the league, in my opinion. I am going to have to put him in the rest, though. I'm going to keep it. Or not the rest. High-level role player. Jonas Valanciunas, I'm going to have to put you in the rest, and I'm going to put you there. I don't know why I put this man this high. He is not that high. He's right there with Pastor Beverly. Um, CJ McCollum, the rest. The rest. Um, Larry Nance, the rest. Or not the rest, high-level role player. Herb Jones, I'm ranking Herb. Herb is a guy you got to rank. All right, let me rank some of these other guys that's in high-level role players, though. Um, um, this is a guy I got to rank. I would put him right in between. I would put him right there. I would put I'll put Jaden McDaniels right here with Jonathan Isaac and and Nobi. I would put Kaysen. I'm gonna just let you stay. Lou Dort. Lou Dort is another one I probably should rank. I'm going to put Lou Dort right here with Asar and uh, Vassell. And, yeah, Herb Jones. Herb Jones, I will put right here. I think you're better defender than uh, Ananobi. Better three-point shooter, but I think Ananobi is a little bit more versatile as a defender. A little bit more versatile. Actually, no, I think Ananobi is a better defender because I don't think, I ain't going to lie. You put, nah, I ain't going to lie. You put Ananobi, you put, um... McDaniels on Embiid for a fourth quarter. He ain't do what Ananobi did. You put Herb Jones on Embiid for a fourth quarter. You ain't do what Ananobi did. I'm sorry. You're not not strong enough. Just not strong enough. Um, Trey Murphy. I love Trey Murphy. I'm putting Trey Murphy up here. I like Trey Murphy a lot. Um, I may be tripping on him. Put him here. Um, Brandon Ingram. All-star caliber for sure. Give me Brandon Ingram like here, to be honest. Zion. Zion had a pretty good year this year. I still got Zion top 25. I'm going to put Zion here. I still got him top 25. Um, What he did in that playing game and then got hurt, it's just the injuries, man. The injuries are killing Zion. So I probably got to put him under Tyrese like I did the other two. But, man, the injuries, man. He played the full. Oh, he played more this year than ever. No, no, no. He just was hurt when it mattered the most, so that is important, though. I ain't gonna lie. Josh Green, let's get to the Mavs players. We got the Mavs players coming up. How many more? We got four more, damn. Oh, my gosh. All right, hold on. Before we keep going. All right, I think we can finish it out like this. Let's keep it going. Uh, Josh Green. Josh Green is... I'm gonna put him in high-level role player. Very good hustle player. Solid three-point shooter. Solid defender. Pretty much what he is. He may be in the rest. Yeah, I'm going to put him in the rest with A.J. Griffin. He may be the rest. Him all the way. Jane Hardy is a high-level role player for sure, but I'm not ranking him. Derrick Jones, high-level role player. Maxi Cleaver, high-level role player. Daniel Graffer, high-level role player. Derrick Lively, high-level role player. P.J. Washington, high-level role player. Kyrie is a top 25 debatably guy. I'm going to put him... With Maxi, him and Maxi right there together. I'm gonna put him over Maxi though. I'll put him over Maxi. Personally, I'll put him over Maxi because of the defense. I think he's a better defender. Simple as that. Actually, put him over Dame. He's a better defender than Dame too. And I think that was a. I think he would fit on the Bucks a lot better than Dame would. Personally, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. He would fit way better as in the number two. I don't think Dame really fits on that team. Because he really is a pick-and-roll guy, more so than he is an ISO. 
Kyrie can do both, but I ain't gonna lie. Kyrie's a better pick and roll guy than he is ISO against good defenders. So that's just what it is. And I don't think he has to play pick and roll. Where I think Dane really kind of does have to play pick and roll. I'm not gonna lie. Luka Doncic. I'm not gonna lie. Luka, in my opinion, is the second best player. But injuries coming into play is kind of crazy. Um, I don't think Luka is as bad a defender as he's made out to be, but at the same time, he's not good. He's just not good. And um, when you play the matches that he had in the finals, that team just goes after mismatches. So they went after Luka a lot. So it's going to get talked about. It just is what it is. Um, but I think his issues are bigger than Embiid. Like, Luka, you got to play off the ball more. Luka, you got to be a better defender. Luca, you got to be healthy. Now, is his health issues as big as Embiid? No. But I do think he was hurt in the playoffs. And he played through them. But he wasn't the same player. So, that's kind of what it is. Um, Embiid was hurt. He played through them. I'm going to be honest. Um, he wasn't the same player. But at the same time, he still was scoring. He still was scoring. Um, so, that's what I'll say. Um, but Luka had a pretty crazy playoffs. I do think that if Embiid wasn't, like, the issues Embiid has outside of injuries is just not a real thing. I think if he was healthy, the defense wouldn't be as bad as it was, personally. Um, Luka, when he was hurt, he just started to take worse shot selection. His shot selection already pretty bad, but he just started to take more bad shots. It's like he, he just doubled down on it. It's kind of crazy, to be honest, but that's kind of what he did. Um, Harrison Barnes. The rest. Kevin Horner, high level role player. Damian Mitchell, the rest. Ka Keegan Murray, high level role player. Malik Monk, high level role player. DeMontis Sabonis. I guess he all star caliber. I would put him. I'll put him like here, though. There's people that think uh, Sabonis a top 20. I don't even see how you could possibly tell me Sabonis is better than Brandon Ingram, Julius Randle, Franz Wagner, Christos Porzingis. Brandon Miller, Jaron Jackson, DeJounte Murray, Pascal Siakam. Like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I get it. But I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, he top 25, but he ain't. I think the De'Aaron a little, a little, just a tad bit, a tad bit. I think, I, I think, I think last year was much better than he was this year. Even though to start the year, he was way better shooter, but that started to regress, and as it regressed, it was not looking crazy. But, yeah, I think De'Aaron Fox is still a really, really good player, though. Um, okay. I'll, uh, put bro there. Yeah, put bro there. Um, Steven Adams. I love a role player. Didn't really play, though, this year. Um, solid defender. Very athletic. Spark plug. I'll put him high level role player for now. Dylan Brooks, high level role player, obviously. Eamon Thompson. This is a guy I do want to rank. Eamon Thompson. Where bro brother at? He better than Lou Dort. Okay, this, he probably just stops here. I'm not going to lie. Because the shooting, but the playmaking, he's a better rebounder. I think his brother's a better defender, but he's a better rebounder, more athletic, and far better playmaker. Uh, Jabari Smith. I love Jabari Smith, man. I love Jabari Smith, but I'm going to put bro here. I'm going to put bro there. Um, Jalen Green. Jalen Green, he showed. A lot, but I'm gonna put him at the back. I don't really know where to really rank him. He's not all star caliber, though. Is he? Jalen Green, a tough one. Jalen Green is actually a tough one. I'm gonna put him all star caliber, actually. Um, single, all star caliber. Yeah, I'm gonna put them both all star caliber. I'm not ranking them, though. Uh, Chris Paul, he's in the rest. Uh, Kevin Looney. High level role player, Clay. <sighs> Clay, man. Clay, man. You got to go to the rest. I ain't going to lie. Andrew Wiggins, high level role player. Moody. 
High level role player. Kaminga, high level role player. Draymond Green had a great year this year, man. I ain't ranking him, though. I'm looking at this. I ain't ranking him. Bro, I got to do it. Hopefully, that's the last time I got to do it. Uh, Curry. Curry top five debatably, but after this year, I would say it's less debatable. Personally, I'd probably say top ten more so than top five, actually. I put him there. Honestly, uh, PJ Walk, PJ Tucker, the rest, Bones, the rest, Terrence Mann, high level role player, Russ, Russ was solid. I ain't gonna lie, Russ was actually solid this year. Zubac, I'm put him in high level. Norman Powell, high level. Harden, high level. He not he not all star no more in my opinion. I do. I would say in the first round, he was playing like all star. He was playing like All-Star. I'm going to put him in All-Star, actually. I'm going to put him in All-Star. I'm going to put him in All-Star. Uh, Paul George. All-Star, I guess. Kawhi. I'm going to put him top 10, but it's tough. It's really tough to rank Kawhi because of the injuries. The injuries kill Kawhi. It kills his, like, entire, like... Debates. I'm not gonna lie. Bobo was pretty solid, in my opinion. I ain't gonna lie. Bobo is one of the more overrated, overhated players, in my player opinion. Royce O'Neal. Uh, dare I say the rest? Yusuf Nurkic, the role player. Evan Ruin. I love a role player. I love a role player. Top ten debates, but I will put him over D book, or not D book, but D Mitch. Um, KD, I will put KD here, ain't gonna lie, I think KD had arguably his best defensive year this year, still was a great offensive player, um, first round they did get swept, I don't think that was really more so KD fault, but hey, I mean, if you wanna have that combo, you can have that combo, Peyton Watson, um, Great defender, so I'm gonna put him high level role player, but he may not deserve that. Christian Brown, high level role player. NBJ, high level role player. JCP, high level role player. Aaron Gordon, high level role player. Jamal Murray, all star caliber player. I don't know how you can really say Jamal Murray is top 25 this year. He didn't really do it in the playoffs when that's where he drives us. Now, he did have those clutch shots, but he didn't play good at all in the Lakers series, and he played even worse in the Timberwolves series. So, yeah, I'm going to just put him in all-star caliber. Um, Jokic, best player in the world. He's the best player in the world. Um, yeah, Spencer Dinwiddie, the rest. Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent is a tough one. I'm going to put him in the rest because he didn't really play enough. But he probably is a high-level role player because when he played in the playoffs, he was pretty solid in my opinion. He didn't get that much minutes. Um, Cam Reddish, the rest. Jackson Hayes, the rest. He's a high-level role player. He probably a high-level role player, Christian Wood. The rest. High-level role player. High-level role player. Austin Reeves, high-level role player. LeBron. I'm not gonna lie, LeBron was pretty good this year, man. I'm gonna put LeBron here. Not gonna lie, LeBron was pretty good this year. Not gonna lie. Um, and then AD, I got top five debatably, in my opinion. But I think Shea is just easily over, bro. I'm not gonna lie, I think Shea is just easily over, bro. Personally, um, top for another day though. Uh, Patty Mills, the rest. Um, DeLon Wright was actually a high-level role player. Kevin Love, high-level role player. Uh, I, man, some of these heat players are tough to rank, I'm going to be honest. He was a high-level role player. Haywood Highsmith was another low-key. Damn. He ain't getting you defense. He ain't getting you much, though. He could shoot better. I give him a high-level role player. Terry Rozier, high level role player. Caleb Martin, high level role player. Jovic, high level role player. 
High me, high level role player. Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero, I'm high on. Start the year for the first two weeks before he got injured. He was low-key trying to get in that all-star. Ain't gonna lie. But yeah, he gotta go high. He gotta go high level role player. Bam. Bam is a top 25. I'm putting bro here. Jimmy, this season? And we just talking about this season. I can't put Jimmy any higher than here, to be honest. This season. To be honest, can't even put bro any higher than this. Bro was injured all in the regular season. And then in the playoffs, he didn't even play. So, yeah. It, it's, it's hard to rank Jimmy this year, to be honest. Like, you could even say he's lower than this, to be honest. But that's me being a Heat fan, being biased, I can't lie. I got to be honest, though. He wasn't that crazy this year. Um, he would have went up a little bit higher. But simple as that. Um, that's the tier list. Um... Those are the best player in the world caliber. If you want to debate any of those guys are the best player in the world, it's not that crazy. You want to debate these two guys in top five, it's not that crazy. But I'm not going to lie. AD may got to go down because I ain't going to lie. What is debate over Shea? I don't really see it. But he is in a tier above all these guys in my opinion. He's in a tier above all these guys. But I ain't going to lie. That top ten tier, I think all of those guys in the same tier. I ain't going to lie. I think all of these guys in the same tier. And in the top 25, I'm going to be honest. I think all these guys in the same tier as well. Like, you, JB, Bam, Ja, Holly, D-Fox, Kyrie. I'm going to be honest. I did solid on that tier. The All-Star tier solid too. I'm going to be honest. Now, um, some of these was ranked. Some of these weren't. Like, I'm going to be honest. The high-level role players, if I would have kept ranking them and trying to put them in order, this would have been like a whole nother hour. So we had to calm down on that. But yeah, if y'all do want more videos like this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. I can do the same thing I did for the defensive players for the offense. If y'all do want that, like the video. I will be ranking the NBA teams next though, probably. So if you do want that video, like the video, subscribe. All that good stuff out the way. Share the video. Anybody do will help or enjoy it. Tell me about the be the first video. Share the video. All that good stuff out the way. Your boy fits, man. I'm about to be mad. All of my friends are dead. Leave them in the cold. Put them in the tundra. I go right. Try our second. I see that. I make a fumble. I was just a tennis with a Leah pussy in the jungle. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! Alright, so real quick. Alright, so. This is going to be thrown at the end of the video. So, y'all just seen me do a full tier list of all the players that pretty much played. Now. We're going to throw this at the end of the video. $15 challenge beat the champs. We got $5, 5 players. $4, 5 players. $3, 5 players. $2, 5 players. $1, 5 players. So let's go ahead and hop into this. So we got $15. For $1, we're going to go ahead and take Jalen Suggs. We at $1. $4, we're going to take Bam. We at $5 already. $2, we're going to get McDaniels. We at $7. For another $2, we're going to get Herb Jones. We are at $9. And for $5, we're going to put those guys with Luka Doncic. That's my team. Facts. If you can put a better team in the comments down below, let me know.